In this video, I'd like to talk about factoring polynomials using structure. And essentially, we're going to be looking for patterns in our polynomials. So two important patterns that we need to consider are perfect squares and differences of squares. So remember, a perfect square is when we have something like x plus y, where x and y can be any type of number or variable expression and we square that. So remember when you square a binomial, you rewrite it twice and then multiply it out using distribution. And when you do that, you get x squared plus twice x times y plus y squared. So this is one pattern that we're gonna be looking for here. And in fact, this problem will be using this perfect square formula. Now, the other pattern we're going to look for in later problems is what we know as a difference of squares. So if we have x squared minus y squared, this can be factored as the first one minus the second one, ignoring the squares, multiplied by the first one plus the second one. So for these problems, we're just looking for which of these patterns we're going to see here. And there are other patterns or structures that we can notice with polynomials, but these are two important ones that show up often enough that they're definitely worth learning. So let's first start by just rewriting our example. We have 16n to the sixth plus 40n to the third plus 25. And a good way to approach these problems is to notice if you can rewrite any of the terms as something squared since that's the structure we'll use in both of these formulas. So for instance, 16n to the sixth, we can rewrite that as 4n to the third squared, since essentially we're just taking the square root of this, and the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of n to the sixth is n to the third, since if you were to re-multiply this out, 4 times 4 is 16, n to the third times n to the third, you'd have three n's multiplied together, and then three more n's multiplied together, and that is a total of six n's multiplied together. And of course, let's just rewrite 40 n to the third in the middle, we'll come back to that later, and 25 is really just five squared. So it's starting to look somewhat similar to this pattern here. We just need to look at the middle term and see if we can rewrite it as twice this first expression without the square multiplied by twice this second squared expression written again without the square. And first of all, we can pull a two out. So let's rewrite this. We have 40 or four n to the third, we're squaring that. And we can re rewrite this as two multiplied by, well, we think there's going to be five in there. So let's also pull the five out. And what we'd be left with is four n to the third, since two times five times four, that is 40. And notice by rewriting it like that, we have this last squared term without the square. So we have the five and we have the 4n to the third, which is the first squared term without the square. And that matches up with our pattern. Since if we compare it to the pattern, this is like our x squared, then we have plus two, and actually this is written in the opposite order, but we can say y times x, since we can just switch the order, and then plus y squared. So this problem can be rewritten using our perfect square formula. And now that we matched it up to our formula, we know we can just rewrite this as x plus y squared. Or since x is this 4 into the third, let me just write that down. We'll write it as 4 into the third plus y, which is 5 in our formula. And we'll add these together and square it. So our expression here is just equal to 4 into the third plus five and all of that's going to be squared. Now the way to actually check this is just to re-multiply it out. So let's do that up here. We will check this problem by taking our four into the third plus five and actually 
multiplying it by itself. We're actually going to square it and distribute. So 4 into the third plus 5 multiplied by 4 into the third plus 5. So we'll start by distributing the 4 into the third. 4 into the third times 4 into the third, that's 16 into the sixth. Then we distribute it to the 5, so that will be 4 times 5, that's 20 into the third. And now we distribute the 5 to each of these. We get 5 times 4 into the third, that's 20 into the third. We got the same term added twice now. And 5 times 5 is 25. And simplifying everything, notice we have a like term here. So 20 of these n cubes plus 20 more will give us 40. So 16 into the 6 plus 40 into the third plus 25. And we got back what we started with, this original expression, which means we can feel very confident that this is, in fact, the correct factorization of this polynomial.